Hi Hasklings! For day 24, we've been given hexagonal tiles to deal with, so let's get to it. As usual, we fetch the input, import our advent of code module, and use interact to break up the input into lines, and now we have a quick look at it. I'm going to introduce a type called dir, and it's going to specify one of the hexagonal directions. Because we have a simple enumeration, we can derive all of these type classes. So next we're going to write a function that's going to travel in one of these directions. We take a coordinate in a hexagonal coordinate system and move in the relevant direction. I've chosen a coordinate system where the x-axis lies along the west-east axis, and the y-coordinates go up and down along the southeast to northwest axis. So you can see when we go northeast, we add one to both the x and the y coordinate, but when we go northwest or southeast, only the y coordinate is affected. So let's parse the input now, and we can use the parse list function with many1 enum p. However, we first need to give f a type signature, otherwise enum p won't know which enum to return. And that looks like it's parsing just fine. So next we'd like to fold the goder function over each of our direction lists. We're going to use a left fold with the origin as the starting accumulator. We use flip to swap the arguments of goder because it's expecting the direction first. This should give us all of the coordinates reached by our direction lists. As an aside, our num instance for tuples allows us to write zero for the origin. So next, we can sort and then group our coordinate list, and then map length over those groups to find out the frequency of each of the coordinates. We need to count how many of these are odd, which we can do using filter and then length. Let's check that result. And that's earned us our first gold star for today. Now part two has us running a Conway-like simulation. That should allow us to use our map neighbors function, even though this is a hexagonal grid. We can start by calculating the neighbors using the goder function with the origin mapped over all of the directions. Next, let's implement the reproduction rule. Using a value of true to represent a black tile, the rule states that if the current tile is true, then we flip it if there are zero or two or more neighbors which are true. If the current tile is false, we flip it if it has exactly two true neighbors. So we need to start off with the list of initial tiles, not just the number of them. So instead of mapping length over the groups and then filtering the odd ones, we should filter over odd dot length. This gets us back a list of the coordinates that were initially flipped an odd number of times. These are still in the groups of like coordinates, so let's map head to get the unique list. In order to use the map neighbors function, we first need to convert this list of coordinates to a grid of Boolean values, so let's write a function that can do that. We can use a list comprehension over the bounding box of our coordinates and then check to see if each of those coordinates is in our coordinate list. To calculate the coordinates of the corners of our bounding box, we can make use of our num instance for tuples. This allows us to calculate the lower left corner using a single call to minimum, and the upper right corner with a single call to maximum. The only problem with this is this doesn't allow the grid to grow when we iterate over our rule. So, similar to what we did in day 17, we should start with a grid that has a margin of the number of iterations of our rule. To do this, we can just expand the bounding box in each direction by the margin given. So, now we're ready to set up the call to map neighbors. But first, let's move the calculation of the starting grid to f's where clause. The map neighbors function expects a vector of vectors, so we need to convert our list of bools using l to v2, and convert it back afterwards using v to l2. 
and we have an error because we should have used a nested list comprehension here to get us back a list of list of bools instead. Okay, great. So now we just need to run through our rules the requisite number of times, and we can use apply n to do that. Then we count the number of black tiles by counting the number in each row and then summing those together. So let's check that answer. And that's our second last puzzle complete. So until next time, happy huskling!